nursing school can be a thrilling experience because you are learning a lot of things about the human body for the first time. I remember the first time I had a heartbeat through the stethoscope and the first time I felt a pulse. And I remember in basic nursing classes, how we do procedures, set up tray, uh, set up your sterile tray, your sterile trolley, doing procedures, bed bath, bed making, mouth care, all of that. And when vacation was drawing near, they were like, we'll be going for vacation, practicals, where everything that we're doing in the simulation room will also be doing on the field. And like, I was just so excited. In my mind, I was like, hey, everybody, hold on. I'm the new nurse and I'm here to take care of you. Like everything we were learning in class, we thought that is how it was going to be on the field. And then we got to the field. Everything was different. And so today I'm going to talk to you about first semester, especially if you are a first year nursing student going for clinicals for the first time. Expectations versus reality. Let's get right into it. Let me know in the comment section if you've already gone on clinicals and your experience or you're about to go and your expectations. I'd like to hear from you. So I'll talk about five expectations I had and the realities I faced on the field and then share my thoughts with you how, why things were like that and what you can do to adjust, okay? It's first year, so don't take it so hard. Okay, so the first thing I realized was that procedures were done differently. It's not that they deviate from what were taught in school, but because of situations and unavailability of things, procedures were just done differently. Example, something like bed making. You know, in school, you learn bed making and you like gather a lot of things, your Macintosh, your bottom sheet, top sheet, flannel, blankets, and all of that. And you make occupied bed, unoccupied bed, cardiac bed, mm, all of the beds. My sister, on the field, is one bed sheet. <laughs> <laughs> one bed sheet and the Macintosh, the, the mattress already has a Macintosh cover, so no extra Macintosh. It's just one bed sheet per patient. And it's understandable because we are in Ghana, it's hot 70% of the time. So you don't want to put a patient under piles of bed sheets and blankets. The person will just be hot. So it's one bed sheet per patient. For all of my clinicals, we had the blankets, but it's for need to use basin because even when the client is feeling cold and you give the blanket, by the time he starts feeling warm, you see that you just push the blanket somewhere to get fresh air. So lower your expectation on some of the procedures that will be carried out. The second thing was that there was inadequate equipment and instruments to use on the field. And so improvisation is the norm. Improvise, improvise. Oh, I'm looking for this to do this. Oh, improvise. We don't have it. So what can you do? Like maybe you have to set a sterile tray, but you don't have the top and down. Um, but you don't have the trolley with the two shelves, like bottom shelf and top shelf. How will you? Uh, how will you still carry out your procedure? You have to improvise. Use some uh, tray, sterilize it, and then use it for your procedure. Get your assistant to help you carry the unclean uh, things. So. Improvisation is a lot. Like I've seen Baltic, Baltic, a eh, Baltic, oh, Baltic, no, now you try, you try it, you know. Uh, then they padded the edge and used it as mask, face mask for, uh, for the ambi bag. Yes, I've seen that on the field. So you see that. Even our tutors, when they are teaching us, they will be like, so in this case, if you don't have it, you improvise this. So listen to those ones so that when you get on the field, you are able to improvise. And these ones also help you to think fast on your feet because if this is not there, what will I do? You still have to carry out that procedure anyway. So improvisation is very important. Number three, you do a lot of observation. In fact, all the information that you gathered in school and you thought you are there, Ness, like ness, new ness in town. I'm coming to a hey, give me the procedure I can do. Master, we don't trust you. They don't trust you. If I okay, now I'm a staff nurse, so I can tell you we don't trust you. You are green in the profession, you don't know anything. Just take it like that. You don't know anything until you prove yourself that I know how to do this, I can do it, and we've seen you and given you the opportunity and you will utilize it well. Madam, you are an observer. But what you can do at this stage is 
always be with the st staff nurses be in a good relationship like have a good vibe with the nurses you go and meet on the staff even the orderly has something to teach you okay so be in a good vibe with them when the nurse is going to do something follow her carry the tray push the trolley go with her whatever she's doing observe and then when you don't understand something you ask questions but don't go and be challenging them oh that's not how they taught us in school our tutor said this and our tutor said that and our tutor said this me when i went to or sometimes maybe in your in-school clinicals you went to a big hospital and for your end of semester clinicals you are at a lower facility and you're like oh but this hospital this is what we used to do this madam you come back with zero reports <laughs> have a good vibe don't challenge nurses that is one thing they don't like don't challenge and another thing is that on the field, we go for workshops, we go for trainings and upgradements of uh, and updates of information. So some of the things you might be learning in school are cake. In fact, some of the books you will be learning in school are cake. So when you get to the field, be open-minded to learn new things and uh, grab new knowledge so that when you get back to school, you I, in your report, you can put in some of the things that you've observed that were taught differently in class. That is the purpose of all of it okay but when you prove yourself like if you are on the ward with me oh Aunt Salasi, i've seen you done this procedure like two times can i try it i'll be like okay let's try it do it this way do it that way and then we'll see how you do and when you get to the level where we can trust that when you say go and give iv injection and give it slowly over 10 minutes you will not go and push it back and come back then they can start giving you other procedures or trusting you with procedures to perform but until that trust is established you are an observer the fourth thing we also noticed was that dusting vital signs were for us it is our bona fide property i will never forget this one my first clinical was at sogakope sogakope district hospital and i think we were rotating or so yeah we were rotating so for that week, I was at the PD ward, and that Monday I got to work. From the time I got to work, put on my apron and cap, fetch water and with disinfectant and all of that. My sister, I was dusting from morning, so my shift ended. Ha! Hey! The, even the walls, the walls were oil paint, so you can dust blood stains and any other stain from the wall. Like, it was two of us, two of us, yeah, there were two of us who were first year students on the ward that day. And we dusted from morning till the shift ended in the afternoon. We just finished, washed our hands, took our bag and left. That is your job as a first year student. Dusting, vital signs, and if anything, we can trust you with oral medication. That is even under supervision. So don't worry about you don't even stress yourself don't wait to be told to go and dust especially when you go for morning duties and you'll be going for morning duties a lot when you get there just start dusting after you are done a nurse is like that a lot a nurse that comes a student that comes in and knows that oh this one is mine i don't have to be told to do it before i do it you are in their good graces already just do that one and then when you are done with the dusting you come and ask what you can do next another thing i realized was that the experiences for us was different depending on the facilities you go to and this one we got to know when we got back to school at the time you come back to school write a detailed report and present the things you learned the things that were different and all of that so when we got back i realized that like depending on the facility you went to if it's a teaching hospital, the experience is different. If it's a district hospital, a polyclinic, a health center, the experiences are different and the procedures that are carried out are different. Example, if you go to a health center that doesn't admit patients, you will not see on the ward procedures like someone who is on the ward caring for inpatients. So the experiences are always different. No stress, okay? As your training advances and you visit other facilities, and some of the clinicals will require you to be in facilities that will give you that experience. Like when you are going for medical surgical clinicals, you will not be in a health center. You have to be in a place where they conduct surgeries and all of that. So whatever you missed in first year, you still experience. The world is the world. It's not going to change, okay? And one thing too is don't be a sly person. One thing nurses hate is someone who is sly. Sly in the chest, she's gone. You can't find a person. Someone who is lazy and is not willing to work. Nurses don't like such people. 
So don't go and be truant and delinquent. You don't come for your shifts. And then when it's time to sign your logbook, you're like, ah, I don't know you. I don't know me. Who oh, me? I've been coming. Oh, if you've been coming, why don't we know you? Eh? So don't go and be sly. You might face bad experiences. You might face good experiences. But take it all as experience and move on with it. Because this is first year. You have like two and a half years. If it's a diploma program, you have two and a half years more to go. If it's a certificate program, you have one and a half year to go. So don't stress yourself about some things. As time goes on, you will learn and even understand why some of the nurses were the way they were. Some of the nurses, Charlie, you have to prove yourself to them or for them to trust you. So if you are on duty with them, you some of them, if you don't go get close and be persistent and they just ignore you as if you don't exist because she knows what she's doing and she will not let some green horn come and spoil her duty or spoil something for her. So you don't just take it that you don't know much. You are there to learn, observe, and go. And when the time is come, you will soon be your own boss. La. Don't worry. So that is all I have for you today about clinicals, expectations, realities. Like this video, share, and subscribe if you've not done that yet. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.